What's up, Brian Tong here with the Apple Buy. You know what we do, it's everything good and bad inside the world of Apple, and the iPad Pro is here. Like, I have it right here, and it's glorious. Like, look, let me show you right here. <laughs> it's as big as my face. It's that, it's that big. All right, now, as per request by some of you, I will not make out with it, and even if I did, it's so big now. That's what she said. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to see it happen. So I'm gonna spend a good amount of time with it and my review from someone who actually paid for it with their own money is coming in next week's show. Also, I still need extended quality time with the Apple Pencil and the smart keyboard. But you might ask, Brian, you just bought the iPad Pro. You're right, but see, Apple decided to make the pencil and keyboard available a week later, even if you pre-ordered, instead of holding off and selling the iPad Pro and the pencil and the smart keyboard case at the same time time. The pencil is this iPad's biggest differentiator. It's the showcase feature and you can't even buy one on day one. That's just stupid. And you know what? That's a bad apple. And yes, my voice just cracked. But sure, there's bad. But the best thing about this iPad, and no, it's not the fact that the Apple Pencil is weighted to roll on its side with the word pencil facing up. Seriously. Now this guy delivers notebook level performance with its A9X chip that's even faster than the current 12 inch MacBook Retina with an Intel Core M dual processor. It still falls short of 2015 Broadwell or Skylake based machines, but its GPU performance is ridiculous, outperforming a 2015 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro in addition to other MacBooks and all the iPads. This thing ain't the iPad Pro, this thing is the iPad Beast. Now, Tim Cook told The Telegraph, the iPad Pro is a replacement for a notebook or desktop for many, many people. They will start using it and conclude they no longer need to use anything else other than their phones. Come on, Tim, I'm sorry. Even the hardcore fanboys know you're drinking a little bit too much of the Kool-Aid. Now, it still doesn't seem like this is a device that will be able to replace my own laptop, but like I said, I'll give it a go. See, Apple's even promising big things from this with a new TV ad. In fact, they're promising the universe with the iPad Pro. Oh yeah, wow. Whoa, this is beautiful. Let's keep on, yeah. Whoa. Oh, I'm feeling this. Whoa. Oh, this is sweet. Whoa! No, 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 help! I'm in this girl's iPad! No! <laughs> oh, that tickles! <laughs> Sound and color. Tip of the day, don't get stuck in someone's iPad. All right, since we're on the topic of the iPad and buying new goodies from the store, if you had to guess, what do you think the lowest rated product on Apple's online store is? I'm gonna give you a moment to think about it. Okay, well, it's actually two things. You were correct if you said Apple's Lightning, the USB cable with over 1,000 one-star reviews. All of my original ones were destroyed. And the other, Apple's MagSafe power adapter with over 1,000 one-star reviews of its own. Arguably, the two least durable products from Cupertino that continuously fray or the rubber coating breaks or just stops working. It's been this way for years and it's pretty clear all 1,000 plus of you already threw your own bad apples at them, but I'll just pile on here. All right, Apple released their latest software updates for developers. The second tvOS 9.2 beta for the Apple TV is out now, and the third betas for iOS 9.2 and OS 10.11.2. Apple Music is also now finally available on Android on the Google Play Store. Membership still costs $9.99 a month, but this could be a nice addition for a mixed Apple and Android household with the $14.99 family plan. Believe it or not, those families do exist. And the Steve Jobs movie, yes, that one is now officially a complete bomb in box offices. It's so bad that Universal has pulled the movie from over 2,000 screens. Projections from its debut weekend were between 15 and 19 million dollars, and up to this point, it's just earned over 16 million. Now, it unfortunately shared the same fate as the 80s cartoon reboot for Gem and the Holograms that was also pulled from over 2,000 screens by Universal. And I never thought I'd have Jam and Steve Jobs in the same story, like ever. And to end things on a good note, you've got to check out this awesome customization from the people at Colorware. If you ever wanted a retro 80s iPhone 6S, check out this color job with the beige coloring, 
fake air vents and that signature Apple rainbow logo. Now the phones just sold out. They made only 25 units for $15.99 a pop. That's $1,599 for you guys who think you're cool, but only think you're cool because you have one and no one else thinks you're cool. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can send me your questions and comments to theapplebyte at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next week for another bite of the apple.